Well, for this time tonight, we want to keep in the vein that our pastors have been teaching and preaching to us about the faithful will abound with blessings. And, you know, I don't know about you, but I know just from my experience just how much that, that I have seen from this and how much that it's changing how I view the word on how God wants to bless me, right? It's, he can't help himself. <laughs> he cannot help himself. He wants to bless you. It's been given to you. And he's faithful to his word. And tonight, we're going to, we're going to get into this, but we're going to see the importance of us being faithful to the word as well, okay? So our, our foundational scripture here, Proverbs 28, 20. It says, a faithful man shall abound with blessings. Do you see that? A faithful man abounds with blessings. The New Living Translation says, the trustworthy person will get a rich reward. And the Young's Literal says, a steadfast man has multiplied blessings. And one commentary says it this way, God will show his approval on the faithful man by sending material prosperity. So you can't get around that. God has no problem with you being blessed. God has zero problem with you having the best. God has zero problem with you living in that house that you've always dreamt of, driving the car that you want. And I know it's more than that, but he has no problem with it. So you don't need to have a problem with it. Don't worry about what other people think. That's been big in me, is that you just be who you are, and you're a child of God. So it doesn't matter what other people say. If they don't get it, they don't get it. You be you, okay? You are the righteousness of God in Christ, right? That's what the Bible says. Be faithful to that. Be faithful to what the Word says about you, and then walk in the blessing that you receive from that, okay? So a major part of faithfulness is provided by our foundation on the Word. Let's look at Luke 6. And we'll start in verse 46. And these are the words of Jesus. He says, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and does not is like a man that, is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. Now, do you remember when Pastor Tony ministered along these lines on these verses, and he talked about the house being on the side of the mountain, and the pillars, until it hit bedrock, and it looks like the house is on stilts? That's you. That's me. We dig deep. We dig deep in the Word until we hit that bedrock, and then that's where we stand. Right. Miss Gloria, she said, Gloria Copeland said this. She says, it's much harder to build your house in the storm than it is in calm, peaceful, sunshiny weather. Think about that. See, and, and I'll just be real transparent. When Carrie and I, I say Carrie and I, when Carrie went through the thing that she went through against her physical attack against her body. I'll be honest. I was trying to build my house in the middle of the storm. OK. And thank God I had a pastor that helped me through it and a church family that helped me through it. But it would have been much easier to build that house when the sun was shining and the birds were singing. So I'm, I'm just here to encourage you. If things are going great, don't back off. Don't coast. I, in the natural, I have a tendency to coast. If things are going great, then why mess with it, right? No, that's the time to dig even deeper. Because how many of you know, in the natural, if you're outside trying to build something in the rain, it might not get built to the best of its ability. 
<laughs> I remember one time building the swing set, you remember that? With my dad out in the rain, in the pouring rain, because it was the only opportunity that we were going to have to be together to do it. And, well, if you know my dad, it was done right, but man, it took forever. <laughs> and it was, it was labor intensive. It was just, oh, is this ever going to get over? If we didn't enjoy it, at least I didn't. So if you're going to build your house and you're going to dig in the word and it's all good right now, keep digging. If you're going through something right now, don't stop. Keep going. Okay? Amen. God will see you through. Amen. Don't yeah. quit. Do not quit. You see here, they were calling him Lord without acting on his words. We've got to act on the word. It's not enough just to know it. We've got to act on it. If we really believe the word, and we do, right? We're faith builders. We believe the word. We'll act on it. We'll step out in faith and act on the word. See, the doer of the word was like a house built securely. The storm couldn't shake it, okay? And now I want to look at something here in Hebrews 2, in verse 1. And we touched on this a couple times ago when I had the opportunity to be up here. So you're building your house and you're, and you're, you're standing on the word and that, that opportunity comes to coast. I want us to think, think on this verse, Hebrews 2 verse 1. Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. We can't afford to let our faith level drop. You can't. I mean, I don't, I don't contend or, or, or even imagine what you all are believing for. That's not important. But I do know this. You can't let your faith level drop about it. Because when you let the word of God slip, that's what happens. You've got to keep a firm grasp on this thing. Because, I mean, I don't know. It might be a matter of life and death. It might be a matter of, of you're the only one believing for that loved one. You're the only one praying for that child, right? Yes. Don't relax your grip. Don't quit. And, and again, I'll, I'll go back to what I talked about before. It might look like everything's great in that child's life and things are better than they've ever been. Don't stop. Keep digging. Keep going. There's another level, right? Yes. Okay. So you've got to see... In this word, you've got to see things for yourself. It's easy, at least in my experience, when I have let things slip, it's because I've been riding on somebody else's faith, if you want to use that term. Well, pastor said this, and pastor said that, and he said that from the word, and man, that was really good. Okay, that's great, and it was good, but did I get in it and receive it for myself? Did I take it? Because if I didn't get in it for myself, then I'm not going to glean everything from it that I could possibly have. I don't want to ride. See, <laughs> I rode on her faith for a long time. And it got me to a certain level, but it didn't get me to the level that I, that I knew, even then, that I knew I needed to be at. But it was easy because I could coast. But then it was real easy for me to let things slip. And then blame her. <laughs> Just being transparent. All right. The more you put the word of God in you, the more you'll hunger for it. Yes. Just like anything else. Yes. Just like water. Yes. Amen. Uh, people say, I don't like water. Well, you don't drink it. The more you drink it, the more you'll, the more you'll crave it. Because I, I know a gentleman, and he, he used to say that, and he said, I don't like water. But you could tell what he liked because he drank Dr. Pepper all the time. <laughs> he craved Dr. Pepper. Well, the same is true with anything. If you put this up on a shelf, you're not going to crave it. You open it, you get into it, and you, oh man, you start finding things for yourself and the promises that, that apply to your situation. Oh, my goodness. It's like the light gets turned on, right? Yeah. And it's like, okay, I see that. Oh, and now I see that. And that applies to this situation and this and that. See, God's good. He wants to show you. He wants to show you the answer to your circumstance. But you've got to get into it for yourself, all right? The more you get into the Word, the quicker that situation will change. Because the, word, the Word's the only thing that's going to change that situation. 
So you, you, can't, you can't go wrong by getting in there and finding and digging as deep as you can. That answer is going to come. Don't quit. Don't let it slip, okay? Now, let's go, let's go over to the book of James. So we want to take this word and we want to receive it. Because when we receive it, that's where you get the blessing. It's not enough just to know that it's in the Bible. You've got to take it. You've got to receive it. We've got to have it in our possession. James 1, 21. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. That word receive, to take with the hand, to take hold of, to take up, to make it your own. You make this word your own. You have to. Because the minute I, I made this word my own, it, it, it quit being a story. It quit being stories about people. It became God's letter to me. Right? Right? The minute I put myself in this word, okay, then I saw the answers to my problems. Amen. Okay? You take it, you receive it to the point it's engrafted. I have a tree in my backyard, and I didn't realize it until someone showed it to me. It's been engrafted. It had, at one point, I don't know, I don't know the story because the tree is at least 15 years old, but at some point, there was another piece of a tree that was engrafted into it, and now it's grown together. And you have to look to find it, but you can see where it became, they became one. That's what the word needs to become in you. You become one. You become one with the word. It gets engrafted. My mom had a procedure done on her leg one time. Uh, she, had, she had melanoma in her calf. And it was, it was pretty advanced. So they had to cut deep to get that out of there. Well, they took skin from the top of her leg and then put a skin graft over that back part of her leg and wrapped it. Well, now it, you, you can see a scar, but there's no hole because that skin was grafted. It became, it became like the skin that was there. Okay? That's you. That's you in the Word. When you take it, you receive it, you take it up, you take it with your hand, you make it your own, you become one with the word. Okay, and that's when we see things change. All right? See, Mark 4.20, and you know this, but let's go there anyway. Mark 4.20 talks about that good ground, right? That is you. That is you. That is you in the word. And these are they which are sown on good ground, such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit, some 30-fold, some 60, and some 100. Good ground receives. Your good ground. All right? You receive it. You take it up. You make it your own. All right? That's you. Now we're going to see a picture of what you don't want to be. And, and, and this is not, this isn't a, this isn't a lesson in condemnation. This is just a warning. All right. We'll go back to James and go to verse 22 in, in chapter 1. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. I, thought that, I think that's interesting that you're just fooling yourself. When you're hearing the word but you're not doing, you're not fooling anybody but you. You know, you know those people. Not you, but you've seen it. I, look, I'll be, again, very honest. I've talked about my experiences in the prison system. Pastor Tony, you've seen the same thing. Steve, you've seen anybody that's ministered in the prison. You see guys that are hearing the word, but they're not doing it. And they want to talk and talk and talk and talk like they're doing the word. They're not doing the word. They're fooling themselves. They're not fooling me. They're not fooling him. <laughs> They're not fooling anybody but themselves. Don't be that guy, all right? Don't be that man or woman that just hears the word, hears it. Yep, that's good, that's good. Oh, that word's great. Yep, 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 yep. And then you walk out of here and nothing changes because all you did was hear it. Right? We gotta be, we've got, 
We've got to take what the Bible says and we've got to apply it to our lives. And the Bible says you're only deceiving yourself. So if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself and goes his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. He forgets. He hears it. Oh, the word's great. The word's great. The word's great. Walks out the door. What did the pastor say? I have no idea. <laughs> right? Been there, done that. And wondered why things weren't changing. Oh, I'm going to church. I even got this brand new Bible. See, you told me if I go to church, my life would change. <laughs> Big deal. <laughs> I know plenty of people that have Bibles. And it doesn't mean they're doing the word. But not you. Because we're taught so well. Yes. Amen? Yes. See, knowing the word's not enough. Knowing what it says isn't enough. You've got to take it. You've got to do it. You've got to apply it. Look, that's why, that's why it says in Jeremiah that the word is like a hammer and it breaks the rock into pieces. Well, that's the word coming out of your mouth, breaking the rock into pieces. It's not automatic. The word will do what it's designed to do when you take it and you use it the way it's designed to be used. See, that's why when pastor talks about faith is a tool, right? You use your faith like a tool but you use the tool the right way. <laughs> you know, you don't, well, I, I have used a key to open a paint can, but it's not ideal, right? right? <laughs> you want to use the right tool. Faith is the right tool for the job, yeah. all right? You take the word and you watch your life change. Yeah. You put pressure on the word. That's right. You take, take the pressure off of you, please. Because I've been there, done that too, where I thought I have to do this and I have to make it happen. And the whole time I had the word in front of me, but I knew better. No, I didn't. <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing. I was getting more of the same and wondering why things weren't changing. Because I wasn't taking his word and using it the way he wanted me to use it. Does that make sense? See, mental assent will agree that the word is true but it doesn't act from faith in the word. And that's, I was doing a lot of that. Oh, yep, I see, yep, I agree. You know what, that's great, that's true. I know that's true, that's true, that's true, that's true. And then not act on any of it. And nothing changed. And I had to be honest. I had to just get honest in the fact and realize, okay, are you doing what the Bible says to do with the word? No, <laughs> I wasn't. But let's find out what, we need to do and how we meditate on the word how we put the word in our heart and then we see real change okay and again these are scriptures you know but don't let them slip because the faithful man will abound in blessings because he's faithful to his word he's faithful to his word even when we're not <laughs> because he can't change he won't change he can't help himself but to bless you when you're faithful with what he's given you okay and he's given you his word. So believe him. Believe what he says. Take him at his word and then expect his word to work in your life. All right? So look at Joshua 1.8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you shall make thy way prosperous, and then you shall have good success. And then I have written in my notes, Pastor must have been preaching on something pretty hard because I have a, a roar <laughs> with an exclamation, exclamation mark. And then it says, it's up to me. It's up to me. It's up to me whether I succeed. In the sense that I use his word. Right? Because, see, it, it used to be all about me and how I can make things happen. Well, now it's all about me with his word, Amen. making things happen with his word. See, it's all about you and him engrafted, the word engrafted, and now you can't fail. You can't lose. When you, you see, so you've got to see yourself engrafted with the word. You've got to see yourself so 
oh, what's, I, engrafted's the best word in this, in this instance. You've got to see yourself so engrafted that nothing can, see, nothing can separate my tree. Nothing. Nothing can separate the, where they were engrafted together. Nothing can come along and pull them apart. That's not going to happen. Nothing can take the skin that's on my mom's leg that's been grafted there. Nothing can come and take that off of there. We've got to become so stable. Stable is a beautiful word. We've got to become so stable, established in this word, that nothing can pull it from us. We don't give it away, right? We don't let it slip because we're faithful with, with his word, then we see the blessings that come from his word, all right? Go to Psalm 1. And one through three. And this is you. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law does he meditate day and night. Then what do you get? And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Okay, verse 3 doesn't happen unless you do verse 2. And 1. <laughs> right? You're blessed when you meet the qualifications of the word. It's, it's not hard. It's like Pastor says, it's just different. It's different than anything you've ever done before. <laughs> At least it was for me in the fact that, okay, i got to put trust in somebody else that's greater than myself and then believe him to carry out and back up his promises and not see that whole self-made man thing just pride <laughs> that's all it was for me anyway <laughs> no no such thing exactly and, and 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 if and if there is then great will be the fall <laughs> it really i mean that's just that's how i see it so you get verse three if you'll be a tree planted by the rivers of water and you'll bring forth fruit in your season and your leaf won't wither and whatever you do will prosper when you don't sit in the counsel of the ungodly, when you don't stand in the way of the sinner, when you're not critical, when you delight in the law of the Lord and you meditate on it day and night, then you get the benefits, then you get the blessings, verse 3. See, you're faithful to the word, right? All right, let's go to 1 Timothy. First Timothy chapter four, verse 15. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Verse 16, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. I, I like that, continue in it, be faithful to it. For in doing this, you shall both save yourself and them that hear it, and then that hear you, all right? So what I see there is there's protection. There's, there's protection in that verse. And protection's a blessing. When you're faithful to this word, you're protected. There's a lot of things that you don't have to mess with when you're faithful to the word. Right? There's a lot, look, I, there's a lot of things that we don't have to... I'm not going to say that we don't face, but they don't, they don't, over, they don't overcome you. Amen. Because you're the overcomer. Because that's what the word says. Right. And you take the word and you you act on it in faith. You act on the fact, OK, I see the word says I'm an overcomer. So therefore I am. So I'm overcoming this situation. Now, it may not look like it to you and it may not look like it to you. But I know in here that I'm overcoming the situation and I don't care what it looks like. I overcome because the word says I do. Right. See, you attack everything from the seat of the overcomer because that's your position. You don't attack it from any other position. You attack it from your position in Christ. Because anything other than that is less than. You're, you have him on the inside of you. So you've got to see that. You've got to believe it. Then we talk, we'll go back about the offering. Then you expect that. You expect to see the things come to pass that you see in the word. 
in your life because you're faithful to the word. You put pressure on that. You put pressure on the fact that I'm faithful to this word, God. I'm faithful to it. And I, and I expect to see your blessings in my life. And he honors that. He honors his word. Like I said before, he can't help himself. He, he, he must bless you because that's who he is. That's exactly who he is. He wants to bless you. Amen? Now, we want the word in the heart. And we need to put it in our heart. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 6. And we'll start in verse 6. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And you shall teach them diligently unto your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. So to me, that doesn't look like there's any time that you're not putting the word in your heart. Right? Amen. And that takes me all the way back to the beginning of not letting it slip. If you're constantly putting the word in your heart, there's no way you're letting it slip. Because that's your focus. That's your goal. You're meditating. You're taking the word. You're putting it in your heart. You're, you're letting it come out of your mouth. You're watching situations change before your eyes. And you're giving all the glory to him because it's his word. He's doing it. Because he's faithful. And he's faithful to you. And now you're abounding in his blessings because you're faithful to his word. You see that? Look at John 15. In verse 7. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. That's... Uh, what more do you want? What more could we ask for? If you ask in faith what you will, it shall be done unto you. Ask in faith and, and expect to receive it because he's good. He has nothing bad for us. Again, that might sound like an oversimplification, but you got to meditate on the fact that he's only good all the time, all the time, all the time. And so that way our expector our expectations of him are only good. Hallelujah. We don't expect to get anything bad from him because he doesn't have anything bad to give us. All right? Look at Romans 10. I know we're moving through this kind of, but it, it is church. So, you know, you, you brought your Bible. So <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't come to hear me give you a self-help talk because that won't help you. I... I me and myself can't help you, but this can help us. We receive from this. We take from this. Romans 10, 8. But what saith it? The word is near us, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Do you see that mouth to heart connection? Do you see that? The word is near thee, even in your mouth and in your heart. You've got to, you've got to see it here. Put it here and let it out here. And, and give him all the glory. Because he makes it so simple for us. He gives us his word to say to the situation. And then we get his results. We get his blessings when we're faithful to his word. All right? Look at Proverbs 2. Actually, go to James. And we'll finish, we'll, we'll finish up what we were talking about in James. We didn't ever get to verse 25. James chapter 1, verse 25. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. So we look, that's up to us. We look carefully into, and we're faithful to it. Do you see that? And what do we receive? Blessing. Because of what we do. With his word. All right. Now go to Proverbs 2. And again, you're going to see, and we're going to see the action that we take here. 
but it's, it's for our good. Proverbs 2, and we'll read 1 through 9. My son, if you will receive my words. You see that word receive? You receive it. If you receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that you incline your ear unto wisdom and apply thy heart to understanding. Yes, if you cry after knowledge and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as hid treasures, then you shall understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk uprightly. He keepeth the paths of judgment and preserves the way of his saints. Then shall you understand righteousness and judgment and equity. Yes, every good path. So you receive the word. We receive it. We hide it. We incline our ear. We apply the, to the heart, right? We cry after. We lift up our voice. See, these are all, these are all things you these are faithful things you do with the word, all right? You seek after it. You search for it like hidden treasure. If you knew, and, and I know Pastor Michelle, I think she used $10,000, was buried in your backyard. How hard would you dig after it? Hard. <laughs> would you just go out there with a spoon and, and, and mess around in the dirt a little bit? Nah. I know it's here because somebody told me it's out here, and I really trust the fact that they said it's here, but... I really, you know what, I really don't. I'm, I'm good. That's the, that's the hearer only. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You dig. You dig. Like she said, you'd probably go rent a backhoe. Yeah. <laughs> that's $10,000. There's $10,000 in your backyard. You'd be up all night until you found it. I know I would. Yeah. I wouldn't go to sleep until I found it. That's how diligent we need to be. If you're facing a situation... Or, or if, if you want to see victory in a certain area, or you're believing for somebody. How, Pastor Larry preached one time, how bad do you want it? How bad do you want to see God move in your life? How bad do you want to see change? <laughs> Will you seek after it like silver? Will you seek after it like $10,000 in your backyard? It's up to you, because it's there. They said it's in your backyard, it's there. Well, God said, that the understanding and the knowledge and the wisdom is in his word. It's there. But you got to dig. i got to dig. All right? Our results are we become an active doer who is blessed in the doing. That's the result. We're blessed in the doing. Now, I want to go to Isaiah 40 in verse 8. Because this word, it cannot fail. It will not fail. Amen. It will not. The grass withereth, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. So that's what you're going after. That's what you're digging after. You're, you're digging after something that's going to stand forever. It's, it's, everything else is temporary. This is eternal. Right? So that's, and we have to be honest with ourselves, and, and that's where the distraction can come in. We can let all these temporal things, I say we, can let all these temporal things get us off course or attempt to get us off course and distract, distract, distract. And the eternal thing, the good thing, the one thing that's really going to change the situation is right there in front of us. Amen. Again, both hands, guilty, been there, done that. We're all working on it, right? So let's look at Hebrews 10.35, and that's where we'll close tonight. But I just want to make this statement to you. The Word of God is the greatest blessing that He's ever given to us. It is his greatest blessing to us because you can take it and use it and apply it to any situation and see it change. It's his greatest blessing to you. Okay? So let's read it once I get there. Unless you've already got it on the screen. <laughs> no pressure. All right. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. Next verse, please. 
For all of you have need of patience, that after all of you have done the will of God, all of you might receive the promise. Do you see that? Do you see what, you, do you see what happens? Do you see the reward? After all of you have done the will of God, after you've done the word, because we know that's his will, after you've done his word, after you've heard it and done it, you'll receive the promise. That's the great blessing to us, all right? After we activate the word, regardless of the situation, we receive the promise. See, that's where it doesn't matter what's going on in your life. I'm not minimizing circumstances. I'm just saying they don't matter, all right? Because once you activate the word, it's changing. That situation begins to change immediately when you and me, when we activate the word. Then it begins to change. So when we live a life of obedience to the word, there's nothing anyone can do to keep us down. Because the faithful shall abound with blessings. Amen. You're obedient to the word. You're faithful to the word. I don't care. See, that's, and, 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 and it might not make sense to everybody, but you know why you're doing it. See, that's why it's so important. I remember Pastor Tony, uh, just, he's, he's great about, look, you need to know why you're doing what you're doing. I, that's been years ago, years ago. You, why are you doing what you're doing? Okay, then you internalize it. Why am I doing what I'm doing? Why are you going after the word? Why? Why? Only you know. I mean, I think I know. I, and I believe everybody's motives in here are pure. You want to see change. You want to honor God. You want to abound with blessings. You want to be faithful to his word. Know why you're doing what you're doing, okay? Nobody can keep you down. It doesn't matter if they know why you're doing it. You know why you're doing it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It, I, I really, I'm, I'm not going to camp here because I said I was going to close. <laughs> I do get two more, but I won't use them. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. I promised myself I wouldn't do that. <laughs> It doesn't matter as long as you know what you're doing. Let the fray do what they're doing. They're going to do what they're going to do anyway. Look, I was going to do what I was going to do until I made the decision. She could pray and, and seek God on my behalf, but until I surrendered, nothing was going to change. Until I surrendered to his word and saw it and, and believed it in his word that I was a sinner and that I needed him, nothing was going to change. She could want it all she wanted. It wasn't going to change. So you're not going to change that person. Your witness will. But you, so don't worry about it. Don't worry about what everybody else says. You do what you know to do. Like I said earlier, you be you. Amen. You be a child of God. And get his blessings. They're promised to you. You be faithful to his word. Okay? See, the end result of sticking with the word will be nothing but blessings. Nothing but blessings because that's who he is. Amen? So I hope you've received tonight. It's been a blessing to be before you. So if you want to stand to your feet. I just want to encourage you, come back Sunday. Pastor Steele will be here, and we're going to have a good time. We have our full slate of services Sunday morning, Sunday evening, and uh, I promise you we'll have a good time. Amen. So if you want to grab hands with your neighbor, and we'll say the vision of our church. Say it with me. The vision of this church is to build people's faith and to frame their world by the Word of God. And you and I will always be world changers. <laughs>